Hi, so in this video we're just going to be extending our capabilities of integrating standard functions. So we should all be happy now with integrating the following things. So if we have, if we want to integrate x to the power of n, we add 1 to the power and divide by the adjusted power. And we don't, and we remember to um, put our plus c on, c on because we've got an indefinite integral because the limits aren't there. Uh, when we integrate e to the x, we just get e to the x because when we differ, differentiate e to the x, we get e to the x. Uh, when we integrate 1 over x, we get ln x because when we integrate ln x, we sorry, differentiate ln x, we get 1 over x. Um, cos x, we integrate cos x, we get sin x. And when we integrate sin x, we get minus cos x because when we differentiate cos x, we get that extra minus minus in front of the sign x. So if it's no longer there, it must have been um, here when we differentiated. OK, so what we're doing now is we want to extend this so that we can um, integrate um, the same functions, but with a constant before the x. So we want something like sine 3 x. What do we do with 3? What does that mean? Now, um, the rule is when you integrate this, you integrate as normal and you divide by the constant. And the reason you're dividing by the constant is that you would actually have multiplied by the constant using the chain rule when you differentiated that function in the first place. So if I got sine 3x, that would have come from minus cos 3x divided by the 3, because that extra 3 would have generated a 3 when we differentiated. And because it's not there, then it must have cancelled with that 3 under here. So e to the minus 4x comes from 1 over minus 4. So you just put the minus there. Um, again, not forgetting the plus c's. Uh, cos uh, of x over 2, integrating that, is 1 over a half. And when you divide by the half, it's the same as multiplying by 2. So you don't need to write this extra step. You can just go straight to the 2 sine x over 2. And then we've got 1 over 5x plus 1. That would have come from ln of 5x plus 1, because it's a 1 over function. And the 5 is there because of this 5 here. So if I differentiated that, I should be able to see ln goes to 1 over whatever the function is. Um, and then you differentiate what's in the function, and that would generate an extra 5. And that 5 is no longer there, so it must have cancelled with the 5. OK, I hope that's clear. Um, some harder questions. So if I integrate the square root of 1 minus 2x, there's two things I need to do. Well, firstly, I, the square root is the same as a half. So I divide by my constant. So there's my constant. So I divide by that. And then if you remember how to integrate this, you add 1 back to the power. So half plus 1 would give me 1 and a half, 3 over 2. And then I divide by my 3 over 2. Uh, and of course, when I divide by 3 over 2, it's the same as multiplying by 2 thirds. And the 2 and this 2 would cancel to give me minus 1 third, brackets 1 minus 2x, all to the 3 over 2 plus c. Uh, check your fractions. Make sure you uh, understand that. So once again, if you divide by a fraction, it's the same as flipping in the fraction and multiplying by it. OK, so here I got 3 minus 5x cubed, all cubed. I want to integrate it. So first of all, I divide by the constant in front of the x. So I divide by that minus 5. And then I do the normal integration. I add 1 to the power. 3 plus 1 is 4. And then I divide by the adjusted power. So I divide by 4. And then I multiply this out. The minus I can just take to the top. So 5 times 4 is 20. And I get 3 minus 5x, all to the power of 4, plus c. Okay, hope that's helpful.